think the most important thing for, tour for communities and tourism is that it enables uh, communities to think of a different way of providing income and it provides a secondary income and this enables communities to invest in infrastructure that they might not otherwise have had so often um, it could be solar energy so bringing power into communities improving uh, water supply and sanitation infrastructure such as roads and often you find when communities become involved in tourism the local municipal government helps them with those uh, investment in those infrastructure. It also helps communities, uh, particularly the women in communities, to have a voice. Um, very often it's the women in the communities who are supporting um, the homestays or accommodation for the travellers. Um, and through interaction with our travellers, it enables women to really feel empowered. Um, so we see a real transition that occurs in communities through tourism, um, as the women become more active. Um, so all, the other thing that happens with um, tourism um, in communities is that it really has a lot of secondary benefits. So, for example, one of the stories the women uh, in Myanmar in a community tourism project we have there were talking about is initially uh, we as a business help the women um, to understand around food preparation and hygiene needs. And we don't, as travelers, like to have MSG in our food. Um, and so the women started to also take some of those practices in the way that they prepared their food around hygiene and, and taking MSG out of their food in their homes as well. And so that started to have a health benefit for them in their own homes. So, it's really interesting that you see these secondary benefits. Um, similarly, in a lot of the community-based tourism projects we have, um, whilst not everyone in the community can be employed directly in supporting uh, tourism, we often create a community fund. And so the whole community is able to decide how to use that fund. So again, uh, in this project in Myanmar, three of the communities decided to save the money over a two year period and it meant that they eventually had enough funds to match what was required by the government to bring electricity into their villages. So the three villages now have electricity. And the good thing about that is that now our travellers have hot water as well in their showers, whereas previously they just had a Mandy style shower and water would be boiled. Similarly. It might be that it enables them to bring in uh, to, uh, investment into things like biogas, for example, which also helps conserve the environment um, because it takes away either the use of kerosene or, or wood fires. Um, so again, other health benefits that come through that. Building the accommodation or the infrastructure can be fast. But actually building the capacity of the community to become an enterprise can take a long time. Building community-based tourism can take up to two or three years before a community is actually self-sufficient and running their own business. Yeah, I think um, community tourism isn't a new thing. Um, you know, Companies like ourselves have, have been staying in communities for a really long time. Um, other companies in Africa, there's some amazing companies such as Wilderness Safaris who have built lodges and the, you, and the community has been employed in those lodges. And, and in some cases over time, the community has taken full ownership of, of those lodges. So there's all sorts of different models of community-based tourism. I think um, the challenge now is how do we take uh, a sustainable model and actually implement that in more places in the world because I think both government and authorities, particularly in areas where you've got amazing natural resources, recognise that it's a great way of conserving the environment, 
by providing an income for local communities that goes hand in hand with protecting that environment. But actually implementing it and, and building a, a structure in different parts of the world where we need to do this um, is not a, a fast job. So it really requires a lot of partnership. Often it requires the partnership of an um, NGO that's been working in a community for a while because it's really important that the community is well consulted and involved in the project from the beginning. It, it often requires funding from external outside and it often requires um, expertise in tourism from consultants or businesses like ourselves and more than anything else it has to be interesting enough for tourists to want to go there. So getting all those things working in harmony to, um, to, to really create a, a well-run, viable and sustainable over the long term ecotourism project takes a lot of um, partnership work. And, and so it takes a lot of planning. Um, I think that there's huge opportunity, this huge opportunity through ecotourism to also educate travellers and the world about the importance of preserving um, the world's great heritage and, and national parks and forests. Um, but we need to be careful about how we go about that. Um, it's not necessarily the kind of thing that you can do where you have large numbers of people coming into communities because potentially that can be very damaging to local culture as well. Um, so we just have to find a, it's a delicate balance.